Alrighty, welcome to the podcast. And today, we're going to be very passionate about what we're going to be talking about because that essentially means that Charles is deeply emotional and woven into the topic that we're going to be talking about, which is the state of the market. So I'm going to be coming out with the newest market report every single last week of the month, except this time I'm just going off of feelings of being in the last 18 months of the market on the sales side, the listing side, and seeing where pricing has gone and where pricing has not gone or homes have not sold. So essentially I'm coming in from not only being in the trenches, but also being on both sides of the deal, okay? Being on the listing side and being on the buy side, okay? This is the thing. So I was there in 09, and I was just talking with a very senior listing agent. She's been around for 30 years. She's representing this beautiful home, $10 million, overlooking Central Park South, and it's still overpriced as a four-bedroom in a unbelievable duplex. It's like 3,700 square feet. It still has to be built out a little bit more. But we were discussing the market because I have a listing in the building, 2.2 million, one bedroom overlooking the park, which to be honest, at any other time, offers would be coming in. But because there are no buyers that are ready to step up to the plate, you're essentially just sitting there twiddling your thumbs and the owners understandably so, are saying, what's going on? Why is this not selling? Why is this not trading? Let's do something. This is the thing. If you are a buyer or if you're an agent that knows buyers, I would implore you to have that conversation or those those buyers to have a conversation with your real estate agent, preferably us, and just say, listen, I've been considering buying or over the next 12 months, something may cause me to potentially buy, whether that's an investment, whether that's to put money in an investment for the long term. And I mean investment, it could be as a primary residence, as a secondary residence, or as a pure investment where you put down 45 to 50% and you just rent it out and then you start paying down the mortgage and then you can borrow against that by another property. You know, you just play the real estate game and you become wealthy, except Right now, the difference between now and 09 and what this woman said was that she's never experienced something like this. So if you're in the industry, her 30 years, that means since 1989, she's seen a lot of recessions, okay? She's seen upwards of four, okay? So it's every two, every seven years, there's a two-year slowdown and then uh, seven year growth, two year slowdown, which in New York City, it's happened. I don't know where I, elsewhere, not really. San Francisco, not really. LA, not really. Miami, a little bit because there's a lot of inventory, but a lot of people are going to Florida. The thing is, there's a lot of people that are going to say different causes. She had her own cause, it was more political. I was looking at it more on how much inventory came onto the market, just flooded the industry in late 2017 and in 2018. And I was I was talking with an owner and unfortunately we're gonna have to take her home off the market because we're not getting any offers on her place and it's a beautiful place. And I was specifically telling her the weekend, I remember this, where it was 10 to 15 people coming to open houses. Minimum, 10 to 15 people coming to open houses with buyers direct, just visiting, just seeing, seeing the market, neighbors. Every, it, was, it was crazy. Every open house, 10 to 15 people. And then there was a weekend where it was four. And then the following weekend, there was only two. And I remember, and then the following weekend, it was two. And I just remember, and we had an offer on a place. I was representing the, the listing, or I was representing the owner. It was a listing of ours. And I remember just thinking, and then saying out loud to the owner, I said, we need to take this offer. We had an offer at the time. And I was, and I told her, I said, yeah, we were going consistently, you know, eight, nine, 10 people at open houses. And then it just went off a cliff. And I, I remember literally telling the owner, we need to take this deal. We can't screw around. We need to take this deal. This is the deal. Sure enough, we took it, set a building record and that probably will not be reached for a while. Okay. Because that was the height. 
okay? That was the height. And ironically enough is that since that time, pricing has been literally going down by 4%, okay? Things were still trading. But the difference now between 09 is that 09, there were a ton of buyers out there. I was working with a lot of buyers. The thing was, banks were not lending at that time. There was a credit freeze and no one could get financing or if they could get financing, they're hesitant uh, because the banks were saying, listen, I don't know if we should because of obviously what happened you know, with the mortgages and <laughs> that whole situation of a little um, liberal on their uh, lending uh, criteria and requirements, 100% financing, 100% financing plus construction costs, just absolutely unbelievable you know, just lending standards that I'm glad we're not going to go to that that route. But since then, there was a boom. And, you know, we thank Michael Bloomberg for obviously opening up the amount of development. He has created a tremendous amount of wealth in areas that, you know, there's been a massive uptick in development, in upgrades, in renovations within buildings, obviously the tax abatement and everything else. From that time, just a ridiculous amount of building happened which was inventory skyrocketing and then from the skyrocketing inventory pricing started going up because there was this really nice product that was entering the marketplace and then from there pricing went up and then owners just started getting more and more bullish and then obviously as everyone said it's a great real estate market and when someone says it's a great real estate market that's when you say um I don't know if I should put my home on the market. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think I should buy. That's what you should be saying. When someone says it's a great, it's a robust real estate agent, when, uh, uh, real estate market, that's when you say, uh, let's look at the historical data, okay? How much has it gone up? 20%? Whoa, okay. Uh, when it goes up 20% or 25% in some areas, uh, that's when you start saying, uh, I think I'll wait a couple of years Okay, really the only people, I was discussing it with the listing agent, and the reason I'm bringing her up is because we had a very candid conversation. She's very intelligent. She's been in the industry for many, many years. She represents very high net worth people, which obviously to get to that position, they've done things right in life. And what she was talking about is if you are selling right now, you have to go to a price you're probably not comfortable with. But that is the reality to sell in this market is that if you want to come to an agreement with a buyer that's qualified and serious, there's going to be a price differentiation, price differentiation between where you want it to be, the expectations of where you want it to be and what it's actually going to trade for. <clears throat> so that's the title of the video is you're looking at a fire sale. If you are a buyer, you want to enter the marketplace. You want to enter the marketplace now. You want to buy. Even if it goes down 1% to 2%, I've been calling this for a while. I, there is no way. People are saying years. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be going on for years. So there has never been a time except for the Great Depression where it's been four years. Okay, So in New York City, I'm solely talking about New York City. If you're looking at 2017, I'm sorry, 2018, when it was probably right around April, right around March, April is when it started. And then March, yeah, probably right around April it started where it just went, pshht, people coming to open houses. Obviously people were going into contracts, so it's not gonna be for another four to five, six months where you start seeing the data. But I remember the time where it stopped and that was right around April of 2018. There has never been a time where it's gonna go April, 2018, 2019, 2020, so that's 2019, 2020, 2021, that's three years. There's no way it's gonna go four years in New York City. There is no way. And the reason being, I'm saying that, is because A, historically, it's never happened, okay? So people are like, well, it may happen. No, and this is the reason being, is that over the course of the last 18 months, you've, I've, I get data every single day of all the homes that come off the market. There have been lately upwards of 50 homes, 40 homes a day, a day 
coming off the market, 40 to 50 homes coming off the market. You compound that every single day for 18 months, that's hundreds of homes per month, potentially, that is, thousands in other cases of homes per month coming off, coming off the market. There's no way. There is no way. There's not going to be a lack of supply in another 16 months when you're seeing all of these homes come off the market. No one is selling. And this is ironically enough, is that guess what's a robust real estate market right now is the rentals. Rentals have been increasing at a rate that is unheard of, even though there is a record amount of rental buildings that have come online between Hudson Yards in downtown in West Chelsea, just across the city, you're seeing hundreds of units enter, thousands of units enter the market that are rentals and pricing is still going up. So guess what we do? We find out what those owners are doing with their home. So in other words, they could be renting it out, okay? So if they're renting it out, then that home is not gonna come due for another year or two. And we've been talking to a couple owners where it's not coming due for another three years. So you're not having a home come due for another three years. And if that's the case, then you're essentially eliminating that home from the market from being sold. Then there's some people that have a one-year lease or a two-year lease. Then there's people that took, off, took their home off the market and gonna put it on in the spring. Or they're gonna wait until the election is done, so that's 2021. So you have these owners that are in complete, just a decision time, a big decision time for a lot of owners. Should I stay? Should I sell? Should I rent? Those are the only three options. Should I say, stay? In other words, stay until it's a better market, stay indefinitely, buy my neighbor's home, whatever the case is. You know, maybe it's a second home now. Should I sell? If you sell, it's gonna be what below your expectations, or if you rent it out, obviously it's not gonna come due for another year, two, or three years. We just heard a three-year lease being signed, which is amazing for that tenant to lock in a three-year lease. Obviously, there's probably escalating rent within that, but you know, it's still still smart on their end. But that goes back to the title of the video. If there is a fire sale, it, and this is the quote I heard from a, a very smart, very wealthy, older individual who has done very well in real estate and in life. And, and what he said is, is that even if he's off selling or buying from the top or the bottom, so if he's looking to buy in the down market, which is right now, and he's off by even one to 2%, even, even if it still, as he said, slides another one to 2%, he said, as long as he buys within a one to 2% bottom, because you don't know the bottom until you say, oh, that was the bottom, it's behind you. Or he says that even if he misses the top by one to two or three or even 5%, he goes, I'm fine with that. He goes, he just wants to be in a general range of buying at the bottom and selling at the top. He said he's never timed it correctly and he's fine with that. Why? Because you can lose a ton of money if you miss by buying at the height and selling at the low or buying at the height and then you miss buying at the bottom again and then you have to wait again and then you just miss the timing of a downturn or a slower time. No one's talking about this, okay? Maybe a little bit. I don't know why it's not on larger news outs outlets about it, but this is my recommendation, is that you get educated in the next 45 days, which is now until the end of the year, and then you get educated by looking at, meeting with a real estate agent, first of all, to understand what are my options, okay? That means going into a purchase educated, what is the process, what's my expectations, what's my timing, where do you think I should buy, where do you think I should actually put in an offer, what do you think my monthly should be, what kind of mortgage, should I do a 15, should I do a 30 year, should I do a seven year arm, what should I do? You have that discussion now. You, you don't, when you're ready to buy is not when you have that discussion. You have that discussion before you're ready to buy, so when you're ready to buy, you're ready to buy, okay? So you have that discussion now, 
45 days till the end of the year, right around there, plus minus, you know, a couple of days. Math wasn't my strong suit. Then January 1st rolls around. There's going to be a lot of new homes that come onto the market because people, like a lot of my owners, took their homes off for the holidays and are going to put it back on in January. And then when we put it back on in January, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have people that are deciding for their children's school. You're going to have people that are looking at the bonuses. You're going to have a lot of people that got engaged or have had kids in the last year and a half, and they've been renting and they're considering buying. Next year, it's going to be flat. It's an election year. I've gone through the last two elections, 2012, 2016. Not that much happens because people just want to decide, you know, you know, I'll wait until after the election is usually what they say. But if you're a buyer, you want to buy next year because by 2021, that's three years from when it started. You know, when the when the the gates came down on buyers and they stopped attending the open houses and they stopped placing offers. I just remember like it was yesterday. And if you enter the marketplace next year and and like I tell my buyers, it's a process of elimination. It's, a, it's not a process of selection. Most people see 50 homes on the market under their search criteria. The paradox of choice kicks in and then they don't make any decision. That's not how it should be. You're essentially taking all of the inventory that you see and narrowing it down to the top ones that you want to move forward with. Okay, that's the area, that's the price, that's the monthlies, that's the building, that's the size, that's everything. And then you only are left with 15, 20 max, okay? You have to get more selective than 20 homes because you've already narrowed it down. And then once you hit 20 homes, you're essentially saying, I don't care where I buy, I just want to buy. You know, you want to have only about 20 homes and then you go see about 12. And if none of that really piques your interest, you see the remaining eight, but you always see the top 10 out of that 20 and then you say okay i like this i want to move forward with something and do it next year because by 2021 that's three years out from when it started people are going to be in a totally different life circumstance people are going to be start entering the market the past is not going to be with them rents are going to be a lot higher and that's when people start debating should i rent should i buy things like that i highly recommend you buy it is a fire sale in new york city and you can get some really good pricing. You should really call us and understand the market. You don't have to buy. We are not gonna pressure you. We're just gonna educate you. If you want to buy, there's, there's really three criteria. Am I qualified to buy? What I wanna buy, obviously. You, know, you could be qualified to buy, but not qualified to buy what you wanna buy, okay? Is that home available in your price range? And then are you ready? So you need all three. You need, am I qualified to buy what I want to buy? Is my home available or at least a similar home of what I really want to buy available, whether it's now or it might be coming available? And am I ready to buy? Because you could have the first two, but you're not, you're not, you're not, you're like, eh, if I find something, if there's a good deal out there. No, you're not ready. And I don't think you should buy because you, you will get buyer's remorse, okay? So if you want, you can email me. Charles at Botanston.com is my direct line, a direct email, obviously. And we're talking to a lot of owners that have a lot of properties that came off the market. We have probably about 70 off-market opportunities that whether it's that one or another one, going in and ensuring you get the best price is everything, getting that bold ask. But I'm going to repeat it. There is a fire sale in New York City. And if you get a good price in seven years, I can promise you, you will make money as long as that's your time frame. If you're selling in three years, you just rent. If you're selling in four years, buy, but you got to get a really good price. If you're selling in five years, you'll make a decent money. Six, yes. Seven, yes. Eight, yes. Nine years, yes. And that's it. And then it, once you hit that nine year mark, you got to wait till the next recession because that is right against the next one, say, in the future. So 
If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, charles at potenson.com. I hope this clarifies what's going on in the market because you're you're having these media pundits that have no whatsoever experience about actually day-to-day -day conversations with people that are in the market that are dealing with real buyers and real sellers that have the money and have the home. I'm having those conversations every single day. I understand where everyone is coming from. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below or shoot me an email, charles at Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys.